But when it comes to competition, I'm just, I'm, I'm more worried about consistency. I'm more worried about bodies of work. The spotlight right now is on Drake, the rap phenomenon, as he takes to Instagram Live to address the recent buzz surrounding Kendrick Lamar, Future, and Rick Ross. While it's not unusual to have a beef between rappers in the music industry, there's been a major hitch amongst all four. In this video, we will delve into Drake's response to Kendrick Lamar, Future, and Rick Ross on IG Live. The Beef. Let you know how I'm feeling. Listen, the way I'm feeling in this jaw-dropping moment that unfolded on stage during a recent concert, superstar rapper Drake took the mic and addressed none other than his fellow artists, Future and Kendrick Lamar. With a microphone in hand, Drake began to speak, his voice commanding attention. He acknowledged the incredible energy in the room and expressed his gratitude for the unwavering support of his fans. The crowd roared in response, their admiration for the rapper evident. But Drake had more on his mind than just his own success. He wanted to address two fellow artists who had undoubtedly made their mark in the music industry, Future and Kendrick Lamar. In the early years of their careers, Kendrick Lamar and Drake were rising stars in the hip-hop industry. While they both achieved success and garnered a loyal fan base, their contrasting attitudes and musical styles laid the foundation for a feud that would simmer beneath the surface. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you and While Lamar intended it as a compliment and a display of respect for his fellow artists, Drake took it as a direct challenge and was not pleased with being included in the verse. In an interview with Billboard later that year, Drake expressed his thoughts on Kendrick's verse, stating, It just sounded like an ambitious thought to me. That's all it was. I know good and well that Kendrick's not murdering me at all in any platform. This response showcased Drake's confidence and refusal to be intimidated by Lamar's lyrical prowess. Drake, never one to back down, retaliated with his own subliminal shots. On the track Language, released in the same year, Drake rapped, I don't know why they are lying, but your shit ain't that inspiring. This not-so-subtle retaliation was a clear message to Kendrick Lamar, asserting his own talent and dismissing any notion of being outshined. The tension between the two artists continued to escalate. At the BET Awards, Kendrick Lamar took the opportunity to sneak in a dig at Drake during a freestyle, referencing Drake's album, Nothing has been the same, Lamar freestyled. Yeah, nothing's been the same since they dropped Control and tucked a sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes. This lyrical jab further fueled the fire and solidified their rivalry in the eyes of fans and the industry. Drake, however, later admitted that he had fallen for Kendrick's bait on the remix of Sh In an interview with Vibe, he reflected on the situation, acknowledging Kendrick's talent Talent, but also standing his ground. Drake stated, I never once said he's a bad guy, I don't like him. He thinks he's a f genius in his own right, but I also stood my ground as I should. And with that came another step, which then I have to realize I'm being baited and I'm not gonna fall. As the feud between Kendrick Lamar and Drake intensified, Lamar finally addressed the situation directly in 2014. On the track Language, he referred to Drake as the kid with the motor mouth, a clear jab at his rival. Lamar didn't hold back, later stating, ending our friendship, baby, I'd rather die alone. Drake, however, wasn't ready to let the feud die down. On his track 6 p.m. in New York, he fired shots at Kendrick once again, prompting a response from Lamar on King Kunta. In this song, Lamar questioned what had happened to hip-hop, particularly when rappers were using ghostwriters. By this point, Kendrick Lamar had grown tired of the subliminal hate directed towards him. On the track Dark Side Gone, he expressed his frustration, making it clear that he was no longer interested in engaging in a war of words. Allegedly, their rivalry escalated to a verbal confrontation that was caught on camera. However, the tape of this incident was reportedly destroyed by their respective management, leaving fans to speculate about the intensity of their feud. While Kendrick Lamar and Drake have managed to avoid direct insults in recent years, the beef between them still simmers beneath the surface. In November, Kanye West confirmed that the feud between the two artists is still very much alive. In the midst of this brewing controversy, news broke that Rick Ross, a respected figure in the rap game, had unfollowed Drake on Instagram. This move caught everyone off guard as the two had collaborated on numerous tracks in the past and seemed to have a strong bond. But Rick Ross wasn't the only one to unfollow Drake. Nav, another rapper, also decided to cut ties with the Canadian superstar on social media. This morning, Drake took to Instagram to respond to Nav's unfollowing by trolling him with a clever quote from Nav's own song, Turk. To understand the full picture, we need to go back to 2022 when Nav revealed why he left a Drake collaboration off his album, Demons Protected by Angel. In an interview, Nav explained that while he and Drake were once close, they couldn't find the right song to collaborate on. Nav didn't want to include a subpar track on his album and risk taking away from the other moments. One potential scenario is that the unfollowing was simply a temporary disagreement or misunderstanding. It's not uncommon for artists to have ups and downs in their relationships, and it's possible that Drake and Rick Ross will reconcile and move past this issue. If this is the case, we may see a collaboration or public statement from the two artists, putting an end to the speculation and reaffirming their mutual respect and admiration. On the other hand, the unfollowing could be a sign of a deeper rift between Drake and Rick Ross. If this is the case, it could have significant implications for 
for their future collaborations and the dynamics within the music industry. Drake versus Kendrick Lamar. When I went in and did the verse, I thought I was just having fun. <laughs> mm. and, 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 you know, these cats I know, and I'm, you know, calling out that we having fun. And we, right, right, we, these we are my rapping. comrades. Yeah. So. In the world of hip hop, feuds and rivalries are nothing new. But when two of the biggest names in the industry go head to head, it's bound to make headlines. And that's exactly what happened when Kendrick Lamar unleashed a scathing diss on Drake. It all started back in 2013 when Kendrick Lamar dropped his explosive verse on Big Sean's track Control. In that verse, Kendrick called out several of his fellow rappers, including Drake. He proclaimed himself the king of New York and challenged his peers to step up their game. This verse sent shockwaves through the hip-hop community and put Kendrick on the map as one of the most formidable lyricists of his generation. Drake, known for his quick wit and clever wordplay, responded to Kendrick's challenge in his own way. He didn't directly engage in a back and forth, but instead released a series of songs that seemed to address the situation. Tracks like Tuscan Leather and 5AM in Toronto were filled with subtle references and veiled shots at Kendrick. It was clear that Drake was not one to back down from a challenge. As the years went by, the tension between Kendrick and Drake continued to simmer beneath the surface. They collaborated on a few tracks, such as Buried Alive, Interlude, and Poetic Justice, but there was always an underlying sense of competition between them. Fans and critics alike speculated about the true nature of their relationship and wondered if a full-blown feud was on the horizon. In 2017, Kendrick released his critically acclaimed album, Damn, which many saw as a direct response to Drake's success. The album was filled with introspective lyrics and biting so social commentary, solidifying Kendrick's status as one of the most influential voices in hip-hop. Meanwhile, Drake continued to dominate the charts with his infectious hooks and catchy melodies, further fueling the rivalry between the two artists. Fast forward to 2023, and the feud between Kendrick and Drake reached new heights with the release of Future and Metro Boomin's album, We Don't Trust You. Kendrick dropped a bombshell diss track titled Like That, where he took direct aim at Drake and J. Cole. The lyrics were scathing and left no room for interpretation. Kendrick dismissed the Big Three concept and compared himself to Prince, contrasting Drake as Michael Jackson. One potential implication of this feud is the effect it may have on the careers of both Kendrick Lamar and Drake. Another implication is the potential for a response from Drake. Known for his quick wit and ability to craft catchy diss tracks, Drake has a history of engaging in rap battles. After days of anticipation, Drake finally broke his silence and delivered his official response to Kendrick Lamar's diss. In a candid interview, Drake addressed the ongoing feud head-on, leaving no room for ambiguity. With unwavering confidence, Drake made it clear that he is not one to back down from a challenge. He expressed his feelings stating, I want you to walk out of here feeling tonight about your cause you know how I'm feeling. I got my head up high, my back straight, I'm 10 toes down in Florida or anywhere else I go, and I know that no matter what, it's not a on this earth that can ever Drake's words resonated with his fans, who were thrilled to see their favorite rapper stand up for himself. But his response wasn't just about asserting his dominance. Drake also acknowledged the importance of learning from past mistakes. He emphasized the need to move forward while acknowledging the errors of the past. However, amidst the excitement surrounding Drake's response, rumors began to circulate. Some claimed that Drake was ducking smoke, avoiding a direct confrontation with Kendrick Lamar. These rumors gained traction when it was discovered that Drake had been liking tweets suggesting he wasn't taking the feud seriously. But Drake Drake swiftly shut down these speculations, making it clear that he is ready to face any challenge that comes his way. He called out Kendrick to step up and defend his honor, urging him to slide for his pride. Drake even expressed his hope that the feud wouldn't spill over into his relationship with Future, a fellow artist whom he holds in high regard. Amidst the escalating tension between Drake and Kendrick Lamar, Drake put forth a surprising proposal to potentially resolve the feud. He suggested that both he and J. Cole, another prominent rapper, should drop their response records on the same day that part two of Future and Metro Boomin's highly anticipated album is released. Drake's strategic move aimed to create a seismic shift in the music industry. By overshadowing the release of the album, he intended to make a bold statement and reclaim the spotlight. This proposal not only showcased Drake's confidence, but also his desire to push the boundaries of competition in the rap game. Drake versus Future. Yep, now the first time I was out with Drake, this is my first time ever was on tour. Right. Drake, the Canadian rapper and singer, and Future, the Atlanta-born trap artist, have been hitting the studio together for quite some time now, creating a musical chemistry that is hard to ignore. Their partnership goes beyond just dropping occasional tracks together. They have formed a genuine friendship both behind the mic and away from the studio lights. Their collaboration on the mixtape, What a Time to Be Alive, which hit the shelves in 2015, was a game changer. It wasn't just any team up. It was like a summit of rap royalty, with both artists bringing 
bringing their A-game. Tracks like Jumpman turned into instant classics, cementing Drake and Future's reputation as a rap powerhouse duo. Whether it's Future's hard-hitting trap beats blending with Drake's smooth delivery, or both artists locking into the kind of catchy choruses that stick in your head for days, their teamwork shines through. Their collaboration extended beyond the studio walls as they embarked on electrifying performances together on global tours. Fans couldn't get enough of their high-energy shows, where they brought their individual talents to the stage and created an unforgettable experience. But it wasn't just about the music. Drake and Future formed a real friendship, supporting each other both personally and professionally. They were often seen hanging out together, whether it was attending events, hitting the town, or simply enjoying each other's company. Their bond was evident, and it added another layer of authenticity to their collaboration. Their partnership was not just about creating chart-topping hits. It was about pushing the boundaries of rap and showcasing their individual talents while complementing each other's strengths. Future's hard-hitting trap beats blended seamlessly with Drake's smooth delivery, creating a unique sound that resonated with fans worldwide. Their collaboration on What a Time to Be Alive was just the beginning. They continued to work together, featuring on each other's tracks and proving time and again that their musical chemistry was unmatched. Their hits kept coming, and their reputation as a rap powerhouse duo grew stronger with each release. Drake and Future's collaboration was a major win for the music scene, showcasing not just their individual talents, but also how well they complemented each other. But when did the atmosphere shift between Drake and Future? Fans and critics alike were puzzled when Drake dropped verses that seemed to contain veiled messages, leaving them to wonder who the intended targets were. Initially, names like Metro Boomin and The Weeknd were thrown around as possible subjects of Drake's verses. However, these guesses didn't quite add up, especially when considering Drake's pointed lyric. What happened to the claiming OIO? We traded him. This line alone fueled speculation and debate about the real subject of Drake's veiled messages. The rumor mills began to spin, fueled by whispers that Metro Boomin, a prominent producer and collaborator in the rap industry, was bad-mouthing Drake to a woman. While this might seem like a stretch, it's important to remember the tight-knit circle these artists and their acquaintances move in. It's not hard to imagine how Drake could have caught wind of these comments, sparking lines in his music like, let me kick it basic, ain't got love for the boy so they fake it. Crack a couple jokes to some, I'm some snake. These revelations paved the way for Drake to drop even more direct lines, hinting at his frustration. Lines like, but if I send a verse, they'll take it. Shoot a video, arm around me like we aces, or pop out at my shows, jump around with me on stages. These lyrics seem to point to someone who was pretending to be supportive, but was actually engaging in deceptive behavior. Since Metro Boomin and Drake hadn't recently collaborated in such ways, but Future had, it started to become clear who Drake might actually be referring to. The drama seems to revolve around a woman both artists were involved with, as Drake hints with lines like, might have a rapper girl, but you ain't Drake yet. Might AER girl, but ain't Drake yet. Another key player in this drama is Metro Boomin, the renowned producer and collaborator who has worked closely with both Drake and Future in the past. The involvement of Metro Boomin adds another layer of complexity to the already intricate web of relationships within the rap industry. Last December, Metro Boomin shared his thoughts on the music industry, expressing his frustration that his projects were not receiving as much spotlight as he believed they deserved. He hinted that 21 Savage, another rapper, was getting more attention than his own work, which he felt was unfair. Drake, known for his cryptic comments, responded with lines that seemed to allude to the situation, further fueling the speculation surrounding their relationship. While Metro Boomin later attempted to dismiss the possibility of any real beef on social media, the situation remains unclear. Given Future and Metro Boomin's close relationship and history of working together in the studio, it's not unreasonable to believe that Future may be channeling both his and Metro Boomin's grievances in his verses. This adds another layer of complexity to the feud, as it involves not only Drake and Future, but also Metro Boomin. The tensions between Drake, Future, and Metro Boomin have deep roots. Future was reportedly kicked off Drake's tour in the past due to some less than stellar comments he made about Drake's album. However, they appear to have smoothed things out since then, collaborating on tours and tracks. But the recent lyrics and exchanges hint at some underlying issues that may not have been fully addressed. To truly understand the feud between Future and Drake, we must go back to the early days of their collaboration. It all started in 2011 when Drake hopped on Future's remix of his bubbling song, Tony Montana. This collaboration was a game changer for Future, giving him a significant boost in his career. However, tensions began to arise when Drake didn't appear in the music video for the remix. Future felt slighted by Drake's absence, calling it a slap in my face. He expressed his disappointment as he had expected Drake to be a part of the visual representation of their collaboration. This incident left Future feeling hurt and sparked a bit of animosity between the two artists. Despite this initial tension, they continued to work together on other tracks. One notable collaboration was the song Love Me, which also featured Lil Wayne. Another incident that added fuel to the fire was when Future allegedly inspired Drake's iconic hook on Started from the Bottom. According to Future, during a studio session, he said the phrase started
started it from the bottom on a song called Chosen One. However, the line never made it onto the actual song. Drake, enamored by the saying, decided to use it on his own track, which became one of his biggest hits. While Drake sent Future a bottle as a gesture of appreciation, Future made it clear that he wanted more than just a bottle. He wanted publishing credits. This wasn't the first time Future felt slighted in terms of publishing credits. He had experienced similar situations with his references on Beyonce and Jay-Z's songs. These incidents left Future with a lingering bitterness, as he believed he wasn't properly credited for his contributions to Drake's success. As the years went by, the relationship between Future and Drake continued to evolve, with both highs and lows. In 2014, Drake referenced starting a group with Future on a song, planting the seeds for a future collaboration that would come to fruition. In 2015, Future made a statement that seemed to suggest that any previous beef between him and Drake had been resolved. He stated that they had resolved their issues and were focused on the future, back on the road, making music, shooting videos, and collaborating once again. It appeared that their past tensions had been put behind them. Beef Squash with Drake and Rick Ross these two influential artists, who once seemed destined for collaboration, found themselves embroiled in a series of public disagreements that captivated the music industry. It all began several years ago when tensions between Rick Ross and Drake started to simmer. Rumors of behind-the-scenes conflicts and subtle jabs in their lyrics fueled the fire, leaving fans and industry insiders speculating about the true nature of their relationship. The once-promising alliance between these two powerhouses had seemingly crumbled, and the music world was left wondering what had gone wrong. As the feud escalated, both artists took to their respective platforms to express their grievances. Subtle shots were fired in interviews, social media posts, and even in their music. The media eagerly reported on every twist and turn, amplifying the drama and further fueling the rivalry between the two. The reasons behind their disagreements remained largely undisclosed, leaving fans to speculate and form their own theories. Some believed it was a clash of egos, while others pointed to creative differences or personal conflicts. The tension between Rick Ross and Drake reached its peak during a highly publicized incident at an award show, where both artists found themselves in a heated exchange. The confrontation played out in front of a captivated audience, further solidifying the notion that their relationship had reached a point of no return. During an interview on Complex's 360 with Speedy Mormon, Meek Mill revealed that it was Rick Ross who predicted the timeline for the end of the beef with Drake. Ross had a deep understanding of the headspace Meek Mill was in, and recognized where Drake stood. He assured Meek Mill that in three years, everything would be alright. Ross's prediction was met with skepticism at the time, as the feud between Meek Mill and Drake seemed irreparable. However, as time went on, it became evident that Ross's foresight was shockingly accurate. This prediction showcased Ross's ability to see beyond the immediate conflict and believe in the power of time and growth. It demonstrated his unwavering support for Meek Mill and his belief in the potential for resolution, even in the midst of a highly publicized feud. While Ross had faith in the reconciliation between Meek Mill and Drake, he held a different perspective when it came to his own long-standing beef with 50 Cent. Ross made it clear that he didn't believe he and 50 Cent would ever reach a similar space of peace. He stated, I ain't got no jobs for him or nothing. The animosity between Ross and 50 Cent has been well documented over the years, with both artists engaging in public feuds and trading insults. Their beef has been characterized by intense rivalry and personal attacks, leaving little room for reconciliation. Drake and Rick Ross, two powerhouses in the world of hip-hop, first crossed paths in the early 2010s. Their musical relationship began to take shape following the release of Drake's critically acclaimed mixtape, So Far Gone. It was during this time that Rick Ross reached out to collaborate with the rising star, recognizing his talent and potential. Their first official collaboration came in July 2010 with the release of Ashton Martin Music. The track, which also featured Chrisette Michelle, was a standout on Ross's album Teflon Don. The smooth production, courtesy of Justice League, provided the perfect backdrop for Drake and Ross to showcase their lyrical prowess. Ashton Martin Music quickly became a fan favorite, with its infectious melodies and introspective lyrics. Drake's signature melodic flow blended seamlessly with Ross's commanding presence creating a synergy that was undeniable. Following the success of Ashton Martin Music, Drake and Rick Ross continued to collaborate on various projects. In December 2010, Ross enlisted Drake's talents once again for the track Made Men. Produced by Two Tall Beats, the song appeared on Ross's debut mixtape, Ashes to Ashes. Drake and Ross also joined forces on DJ Khaled's hit single, I'm on One, in May 2011. The song, which also featured Lil Wayne, became an instant anthem and received a Grammy nomination for Best Rap Sung Collaboration. As their 
their musical relationship continued to flourish, Drake and Rick Ross began to explore the idea of a joint project. In August 2011, prior to the release of Drake's highly anticipated album Take Care, he teased the possibility of a mixtape with Ross. The project, tentatively titled YOLO, You Only Live Once, was met with excitement from fans who eagerly anticipated the collaboration. While the joint mixtape never materialized, Drake and Rick Ross continued to collaborate on individual projects. In September 2011, Drake released Take Care, his sophomore album, which featured a guest verse from Ross on the track Lord Knows. The song, produced by Just Blaze, showcased the dynamic duo's ability to deliver introspective and emotionally charged verses. Their seamless blend of styles combined with their undeniable talent captivated audiences and solidified their positions at the top of the rap game. This is all we have for you in this video. If you enjoyed watching it and would love to keep exploring more videos like these, then go ahead and click on any of the cards on your screen.